Hi, I'm Stephen with MikeReynolds.com, and today we're talking about shotgun microphones. Now, I have a special place in my heart for shotgun microphones because um, it was one of the first microphones that I got to use on a daily basis uh, back when I started my career as a uh, uh, sound location um, boom operator. Okay, anyway, let's just get down to uh, talking about uh, the basics of shotgun microphones. Uh, shotguns are small diaphragm condensers uh, by design, uh, and they come in various sizes uh, for from 12 inches all the way up to 34 inches long. Um, they begin with a capsule that utilizes a supercardioid or hypercardioid pickup pattern uh, that is then transformed by an interference tube. They tend to have a frequency response range from 30 hertz all the way up to 20K, and they can handle sound pressure levels all the way up to 130 dB. Now, since shotguns are condensers by design, they require an internal or battery uh, or external or phantom power source in order to operate. Now, shotguns often get misunderstood and therefore they often get used incorrectly. So I'm here to help you understand them just a little bit more. Now, the capsule on a shotgun usually has a hyper or super cardioid pickup pattern to begin with. But on a shotgun, that capsule is actually placed at the back end of what's called the interference tube. So right about here. Uh, if you look at any shotgun mic, you will notice a large amount of slots on either side of the mic. Um, well, that mic picks up sound coming straight through the top of the mic, which is on axis, uh, as well as through the sides, which is called off axis. Uh, that sound comes through the side and reaches the capsule at different times than the sound that is actually entering through the top. Uh, and therefore, it ends up canceling out some of the frequencies being picked up from the side. So when using a shotgun, keep in mind the positioning of the interference tube in order to reject more of the sounds you don't want. Now the length of a shotgun is relative to its ability to reject even more off-axis sounds. Sennheiser's ME88, for instance, is a good example of highly directional shotgun mic. It's 34 inches long or 88 centimeters long, so that rejection tube uh, makes that very, very directional. Now, shotgun mics uh, are designed to capture dialogue for TV uh, and film, first in the studio and later uh, on location. The, many location sound artists began using these mics to their advantage uh, while in the field and began capturing ambient sounds and sound effects that were later used in post-production. So shotguns are known for the ability to produce a very natural uh, sound when capturing dialogue, especially compared to most lavalier mics. Microphones. Now, in general, shotgun microphones are highly affected by air movement and wind, so it's highly recommended that you always use the supplied windscreen when using a microphone, especially when you're moving around trying to capture dialogue. Um, this is your basic uh, windscreen here for the ME67. Now, when you're traveling uh, outside on, on location, uh, you're going to need additional uh, wind protection, so that's going to come in the form of a Zeppelin, uh, and even, even more so, uh, uh, adding a woolly or what's called a, a windsock. Now, shotgun microphones are usually found in a shock mount on the end of a boom pole um, that's either held by a human being or nicely placed in a boom pole holder on top of a C-stand, just like what we're doing right now, actually. Shotgun mics uh, cost between $300 and $3,000, so giving them a test run on a rental would be a wise thing to do. At MikeReynolds.com, we carry a range of shotgun mics that start at about $35 all the way to about $100 for a three-day rental period. Well, that wraps it up on the intro to shotgun microphones. Um, stay tuned for more on specific shotgun mics, including the AKG C568B, uh, which we're recording on right now, uh, the Sennheiser ME67, and the MKH416, and finally the Sankin CS2. Until next time, I'm Steven with MikeReynolds.com. Mm -hmm.